Hi, I'm so glad you're here. My name is Galisi and this is Silver Krona Estate, my Swedish authentic 1850s farm estate. This is actually the third video in this mini series about this estate because this took over 12 hours to build. So I had 12 hours of footage. Um, so I actually divided it into three parts and this is the third part. You can find the two other videos linked in the description below. If you haven't seen the first and the second video, I highly recommend that you go and watch them first um, because you will see everything about the estate, the lore, as well as the history about these kind of houses in Sweden. And if you clicked on this video, you probably are interested in that stuff. And it's going to be more fun to like see it from start to finish. In the first part, I go through the main building structure of the houses, uh, as well as the exteriors, the stables and the converted barn apartments to the right of this estate. In the second part, um, we go through the actual main house and the interior design of that house. In this video, we're going to focus on the estate garden, the wedding venue and the landscaping and seeing the full complete build. If you watch all of the episodes, I'm sorry that I'm repeating myself, but it's just for all the new people that maybe are not familiar with the sims or who just haven't seen the first two videos but i just want to explain quickly that um in this um my save file which this build is made for um i have a system where i use kind of base packs and then additional packs in a system so i have something called the build and lot packs and those are the only packs that you need to have to be able to place these buildings and have them be completely intact and playable and nothing look weird or missing and then I add on top of that something I call the gameplay packs and those are optional if you have those packs of course it's gonna enhance the kind of storyline of your gameplay but you do not need them uh, to be there to for the build to be complete and I did this so people who have limited packs can really enjoy it to the fullest and that people who have more you know, a bigger range of packs or all the packs really get the full experience of like my kind of setup of these builds. So it's like a combination to get the best of both worlds. If you want to download this estate for your own game, my uh, gallery ID for The Sims gallery is Khaleesi369. If you are new to The Sims and don't know how to do this, um, go to my website link in the description and I have a page there that explains how to do this uh, and also links to all of my other uh, builds that I do as well as my Discord and all of my videos on different builds. So that's a good place to go because you kind of find everything in one place. So this courtyard was actually the first thing that I imagined when I was thinking about what this um, build would look like. And I specifically was imagining this kind of gravel um, courtyard, a, bit, a pretty big space um, where people would actually be able to uh, drive up cars, be able to uh, park them. You would be able to have a lot of guests, guests kind of park their cars along like the gravel paths. Um, so it needed to be like a, a really big like spacious area um, and um, it actually was inspired by some castles I've been to um, except for specifically the the path from the main gates um, that is from um, my mom's neighbor that is actually a castle um, I explained more about that in the previous videos and that kind of avenue of trees that you're gonna see in a little while that I create with birch trees um, I was thinking about about that castle's like parkway or like yeah like alley like avenue of trees that goes from the water up to the actual uh, castle and i was thinking about that literally every estate of a certain age at least in scandinavia and europe if they're this kind of size and they are that old they always have one of these tree lined avenues that come either up to the house or it's part of the like kind of road up to the estate um and you want it to be a really big big trees because why they're so big is because they're as old as the house they usually planted those in the beginning when they also built the house and then they've been growing for literally hundreds of years 
So if you're trying to like uh, get inspiration to build your own estates or castles in the sim, um, think about when you do these avenues with trees, make sure that they are actually included somewhere on the estate. Usually, as I said, on the front of the building where kind of like guests would arrive and make sure that the trees are big enough because that was it's actually like one of the features that make the build feel really old. Um, and this is kind of the strategy I do when I do uh, builds like this. I bring out all of the assets on the actual ground to see what they look like. Um, because in all the different worlds in The Sims, the, the main ground that you see in like outside of the lot and on the lot when you don't have any type of um, uh, like put anything on it, it's all different. There are different shades of like green, dark green, dirty, leaves, grass, light grass, dark grass, etc. And even if there's packs, uh, if you're using like trees from that specific packs, it doesn't always mean that they actually match the ground or look normal or like realistic. So I always put all of it out there to just see and I just pick away anything that looks unnatural and try to piece it together um, and also see if they fit together as like kind of a unit. Um, and in this case, I was specifically thinking about Scandinavia and Sweden and what kind of trees would look authentic in that kind of space. Um, and here you see those birch trees that I was talking about. These are from the cats and dogs game. Um, uh, game pack and uh, um, expansion pack sorry and they are so good those trees they look so realistic they're big enough to actually look like old birch trees that we have here in Scandinavia and you can see also that all of these trees in my avenue here have slightly different colors on the leaves and I discovered that they actually have different shades on those trees so it's not just one tree it's actually different shades so you can mix them and match them together which makes it looks so amazing. The thing is though, that's also made me realize how little variation we have on the landscaping when it comes to the trees. We have different colors on like the bushes, a lot of them with flowers, etc. But the trees are just one shade and it makes kind of the landscaping with trees look very stale, um, especially with like, for example, we have beautiful oak trees, but they only have one a variation of them and they don't have any shades or differences in, in variations on, on the leaf or um, the bark or anything like that and I wish that they actually did an update on this and improve that because that would change so much of the landscaping for us and we could be like so much more creative um, so I don't feel limited when I do landscaping like this I don't feel limited when it comes to the flowers etc but I do feel very limited when it comes to the trees um, I wish they had more just a more color va variation slight color variation just to make it more dynamic um, and um, but I do love those birch trees and compared to the birch trees that we have in the base game they're just like sticks in the ground meaning that they are very very young birch trees and I mean like super young birch trees because even if birch trees here in Scandinavia are young they still have knots on them etc like they don't have to be as old as those specifically because they look really old um, but still like that's like normal kind of um, like age of trees when it comes to birch trees they don't really have in the game they only have the super old ones or the little stick ones that are like younglings basically um one of the other features i really wanted for this uh build was this huge center kind of pond for that big driveway um that would be like massively landscaped and me personally i actually do um uh, own like over 300 plants i'm a complete plant nerd um i uh, collect tropical plants and also do a lot of gardening with vegetables um and i actually um did for my mom for her birthday i actually actually redesigned her whole garden and built it for her so that was a project I did for like I think it was three or four I think this is the third or fourth year so I help her with it every year and we improve on it but that was like her big birthday present that I did one full year under I think it was five months um, I first designed it got her approval and then I literally went every weekend and um, dug it up and re redesigned it and it's so cute now it's so my mom's style um, it really is like a, a British kind of cottage garden and um, we love 
being there in the summer. It's so, so nice. Um, and I love that kind of landscaping and stuff. So I have a lot of fun doing that part in The Sims. And that's also why you will see, uh, like I have certain techniques I do when I do landscaping. I'll show you more, more when we go to the actual estate garden, um, a little bit of like tips and tricks that you might like to know. This was one part that I was really inspired by my friend's house. He used to live in, in one of these estates at the like lower floor in the main, um, main building. I was thinking about like, I remember, oh wait, like when they have these big estates and they've like cut them up in different apartments, they usually have this little section at like the, the front gate where they have all of the mailboxes and usually the trash cans and also a little like sign that kind of shows, uh, it usually is like the name of the estate because they're historical buildings. It might say a little like note about the building um, that is like literally from the municip like, um, municipal area that have like you know historical like facts that they put there and then like little cork boards about like you know stuff happening for the neighbors to like keep track of if it's like cleaning days or like gardening days and stuff like that and i found this uh cork board that actually uh, worked perfectly to like fit here to look pretty natural um and i think it kind of like tied the whole front of the building to look more lived in uh if you know what i mean I'm recording this before the for rent expansion pack has been released for the, the um, pre like um, sales and um, I wanted to include this part so that people who do not gonna they're not gonna use for rent or don't want to use it for specifically for this build still have that kind of feeling of like that community or like larger estate um, because even if you play with just one family I think that maybe you have like the grandparents living in one section of the house and maybe the the main family and another it would be realistic to have different kind of mailboxes and stuff like this um in that main uh kind of feature in the middle of the driver here you could see i was landscaping and i was using ferns hydrangeas and hosta um, and that is actually very typical plants to have in a garden or landscaping in sweden they actually thrive here and i can tell you that i specifically have all of those tree plants uh in my mom's garden that i designed um so if you're looking to do like scandinavian builds those are great uh landscaping objects to use here you're seeing me <laughs> like get out a lot of weird stuff um, from the debug and the reason I was doing this I was trying to find some kind of debug base game sign that I could use to make these kind of like formal parking spots that they would have for like the cars like both the people who live here as well as visitors um, so I made parking spots here and made the ground kind of a little bit more dirty where the cars would be standing because it would be like dark under the car so things would grow under there. Um, and I was trying to find cars that would be like a mixture of like more working cars for the estate as well as maybe the more fancy cars, you know, maybe the people living upstairs or maybe Olaf's like main car when he's not working. Um, and I was trying to get a mixture together that wouldn't stand out too much from the build itself but still feel like really stick cars like it's a mixture of cars um here is when i actually start on the estate garden um this is in the stat section of this build and the whole point of doing this garden kind of like a formal garden is of course this is very typical for these kind of estates they usually have old gardens and one of the things they usually have is old um apple trees very very common in these kind of settings in Sweden because we have like winter apple uh, types that actually thrive here in Sweden so my um childhood friend who lived in this kind of estate one of the best parts of her like uh home was the old estate garden behind her home um that had these hundred year old apple trees that were so beautiful and i actually just as a birch trees i like these trees that you can see there in the background because they actually have different shades and the different shades of that tree is actually how how far along in the blooming process that tree is which is also something I wish they had more of in The Sims because that also makes the, the garden look more realistic that different trees are kind of like um, further back or further like forward in the blooming process. Um, and it also, I use them to mimic those kind of like old apple trees that most of these estates have. Uh, for example, 
my mom, her house is literally placed in the garden of the uh, castle that live, she lives next door to. So they built her whole neighborhood around the existing kind of like valuable trees. Um, so around her neighborhood, it's full of these like like several hundred year old apple trees um, and also a lot of other weird plants that have kind of escaped from the, the castle garden and spread into the forest so it has a completely like specific fauna to that area based on literally things escaping from the garden so i wanted this garden to be very formal with kind of like pretty big pathways um something that you would have like guests come to like back in the day you would be able to walk in like groups here and i wanted it to be um a mixture of like organized landscaping meaning there's actual like a setting there's a color scheme it would be like a professional gardener uh, maintaining it as well as some parts that have more of like wildflowers simply because that's a style that um, Swedes really enjoy and even back in the day um, kind of the romanticism of these like wildflowers and um, the kind of combination of the different grasses and something that I discovered and you're gonna see me build with those is that there's a few really good grasses in the debug for base game and adding those among your flowers make them look so much more realistic like it's a little bit of weed around you know the bushes you can't always get to all of it um, and it also makes them look more like dynamic and kind of you know fairy tale like romantic natural etc um, and the uh, you can see this um, structure that I put in the garden that is the greenhouse and I was thinking also about the old greenhouse down in the south like where I have like friends of the family who have houses and those old greenhouses down there a lot of them are made actually in stone so they have like just stacked old stones on top of each other um, and kind of fitted them with old wood windows um, so I actually found that uh, stone that kind of looks like it's stacked old stone and the windows I made them white but a little bit of yellow in them so they kind of look like they were stained old windows. So here's where you see me actually start working on the outdoor area of the estate garden and you'll notice that I'm literally almost only using light like white stained wood and it's very simple furniture even that this is like a big kind of luxury you know estate and this is pretty typical for Scandinavia and there's a reason for it um the reason why you even with like very like big people's like have big mansions their outdoor furniture will be very simple um it's because that we have winter here and very harsh winters with a lot of moisture and and freezing temperatures so there's literally no point for us to have very expensive like heavy big outdoor furniture because you have to bring them in every single year and usually you don't put them inside you put them in some kind of shed etc so they will be you know put through the test of winter and the cold so usually we have pretty simple furniture simply because it, there is no point in having something expensive when it's going to get ruined so for me being a, a swede when i think about summer and like doing these summer activities i see these kind of light furniture and kind of simple settings um, and I think also that brings kind of to the lightness of like Scandinavian summer and when we like celebrate for example midsummer which is a Swedish holiday um, I had that in mind when I built this outdoor area I wanted this to be a place where in my save file you can go here and like celebrate midsummer at this Swedish estate um, so I wanted to have a bar and I wanted to have a grill and a big table where you can sit down and I wanted to have this outdoor lighting um, so that it looks really beautiful in the evenings and I wanted to have this simple like wedding venue that is just an outdoor kind of you know uh, farm style wedding type because that's also very typical for Sweden but I put a microphone in the middle because this could also be an outdoor venue for like a singer songwriter and these kind of estates where you can come and like visit and like you know enjoy their maybe um, restaurant or cafe and their gardens or greenhouses they usually have performances as well to like draw people in and have some way to make money so I think that would be a nice feature to have so people can come here maybe you know you have a singer songwriter that comes here and performs forms you know during midsummer's eve or you know whatever you want and in my save file if you have seasons in my save file 
you literally have I put midsummer as a celebration in there with midsummer kind of activities, which I think is a lot of fun and like fun for people to play with. Um, it's good to know if you're not Scandinavian that midsummer is not a religious holiday. It's just us celebrating like that there's literally light and everything is blossoming. So you don't have to be afraid to like play around with that. You can celebrate midsummer as much as you want, even if you're not Scandinavian. We just love that because it's just all about like enjoying nature and summer and like having a beautiful evening together with like cozy lighting and you know dressing up feeling summerly and like you know beautiful um so i wanted this to be a space where people can like enjoy that experience because i just love sharing that kind of culture with other people here's where you can see that i placed some of that like debug uh, grass among those flowers to make it more look like kind of a meadow uh, and as i said that kind of meadow style of gardening is very common in sweden and even more common now actually because people want to uh, make an effort to preserve bees wild bees that are declining and one way to do that that is very effective is to plant wild flowers that bees really love so that they have a lot of food available um, so I planted a lot of those kind of garden like um, meadow flowers in my mom's garden and I see all of our neighbors doing it too people even do like gorilla gardening and like place to kind of those kind of uh, flowers like in the city etc it's really fun um, so I wanted to really like the landscaping to really reflect kind of what it would look like in a Swedish kind of estate like this this is the more formal part of the uh, landscaping and this is also something that is very common when you see these kind of estates in Sweden. They will have a mixture of more formal, like set gardening, as well as those meadow style uh, areas to make it kind of a mixture and feel very alive. Um, so around the greenhouse, I made it very formal and like structured. And the idea here is that this is a professionally kept greenhouse. They have a gardener who actually designed and made this, and it is for people to enjoy and have this experience in coming to this old fashioned garden. Um, and I really liked how the a kind of path from the gravel of like the estate there, um, the kind of pathway onto the, the, the garden path. When I fill in all the flowers, it feels very like luscious and like planned. And um, I think it's very important when you do gardening and like kind of landscaping in The Sims to, to imagine and remember, is this structured landscaping or is it more of a natural feel? And that it also the amount of flowers and how structured they are and how like filled in it is, if that correlates with the level of building it is, if it's a luxury building, if it's an oldest state or not, if it's maintained by a gardener or not, um, to match that kind of to make it make, look more realistic. And in this case, because it is an estate like this, it is realistic that it would have that kind of structured, thought out, planned garden. Um, so I usually when I do gardening in gardening, doing gardening, I'm not doing gardening in this Sims, but I'm doing landscaping. <laughs> When I'm doing landscaping in The Sims, I usually um, stick to a color scheme simply because that's what I do in real life when gardening. Um, I'm actually gonna do a, a like a specific video only on landscaping and how to landscape for different builds in terms of like if you're landscaping for a mansion, if you're landscaping for an historical building, if you're landscaping for a starter home, if you're landscaping for someone who's not supposed to be a gardener but they have an old garden and kind of show you tips and tricks to make it look realistic for the different types um, and also show you different planters and like ways you can structure the landscape to give get different feels um, but I want to do a video that's literally like step by step showing you like different styles and then literally take all of those landscaping uh, things that I built and put them on one lot so you can just copy the lot and then take out whatever you want um, let me know what you think about that idea I thought about it yesterday and I thought that would be probably helpful for people who want to like either learn to landscape more in the sims it's good to actually see it live like in your game um, or also people who don't want to landscape they just want to have the pretty end version of someone who's done it for them. Let me know what you think about that idea. Is that something you would want from me? I will actually have a lot of fun doing it. So here you see that I also do the same strategy that I did with the trees. I put all of the assets I think would possibly work for this build out <laughs> literally on the floor. 
and then I look at the colors they actually have and see how the kind of structure and feel of them, uh, you know, are they dense, are they sparse, and how that could fit together. And also I'm using techniques for how I actually build real gardens, uh, how I design real gardens and how do you layer plants. So that's what I thought about making that video where I can actually explain from like a real perspective of doing landscaping, what you should consider and like how a landscaper or like someone who does real gardening would think and I think that would actually inform you in like when you look at the plants and you would get a more realistic feel on how to like combine them um, because I realized even if I had that skill and I had that knowledge I didn't apply it in The Sims, which is kind of crazy. <laughs> but when I started doing that, I feel like my landscaping improved a lot. And I felt that they kind of melted together with the builds and the built look kind of more like real houses. Um, it was also really interesting for me when I was doing this build. I was actually going back to look at old uh, save files of mine of one of my kind of like uh, um, like legacy families that I've had for years. It's called the East family. They're actually one of the um, big families in my save file. They have a lot of lore um, and um, you'll find them in several different parts of the world because they're very a very big family. Um, and that's a family that I played authentically in The Sim. So they're not cheated to the level they are. Um, they're organically become the family they are today. Um, but I was looking at one of the old mansions that they have and I realized that I had no shading I had no like dirt anywhere. It was just plants planted on the original, like, uh, you know, um, uh, forest floor of the lot. And it's crazy to look back and see the difference between that original building without proper landscaping and what the same building looks like today. It actually shocked me how stark the difference is it just made me realize how how important it is to put in that dirt to put in those shades that variation um in the kind of grass as well as under the plants to give that authentic feel just as you saw me do earlier with the gravel kind of um, pathways and um, um the entryway to the actual estate what a difference it's made it makes when you just put a little bit of um uh kind of uh, just a shades of dirt uh, you know where the cars would drive where you know the cars would stand where people would enter the houses because that's naturally places where kind of the gravel would move around and where uh for example um a garden path would be kind of worn down a little bit or you know where people would maybe cross there is a real path but they would cross over the grass because um, it's a faster path if you think about like a university or any type of like you know community building there's usually those like fast routes that are just like you know etched into the the grass because people just take the fastest route so making those small adjustments really make a difference for how authentic and alive kind of the the buildings uh, feel like um, here you see also me placing more of the debug ferns that I use like I use kind of as big bushes um, and I had a lot of fun doing this kind of kind of flow of this garden having this super structured part where you see here by the pathway where it's like you know it's it's obviously planned by a gardener who has a color scheme in mind um, they strategically like put it together as well as these meadow parts that is kind of like where a, not a lot of like visitors maybe would be uh, like in the front of the house that is closer to the horses because that is kind of like where you know more the family would be um, and it's not like part of like the official official views I would say like of the state and I kind of recognize that also from these kind of castles and buildings that there are places that are more structured that kind of is like on view and then there's less structured places where you know things can grow a little bit more that's why I put, put a lot of these grasses in here too to make it less structured but still very pretty and kind of uh, what I think what British people would call a more like a cottage style garden but um, in Sweden we have more of the meadow style but also the cottage style so those are different things for us. Uh, I really like this color combination. As you see, very obviously, I had a, a color scheme of like these kind of peach and oranges, as well as the blue and purple, and then a bit, a little bit of white uh, splashed in between here. A thing I also did recently with that uh, mansion that the East family owns in Willow Creek, um, I did an actual 
aeroid if you know tropical plants you know what aeroids are but aeroids are basically the plants that grow on other plants in the jungles um, which is the type of plants that i personally collect and have a lot of experience and knowledge in and also sell um, but um, i actually did an indoor vivarium a vivarium is kind of like um like um like a fish tank but for plants like it's it's a glass box that keeps the humidity and um kind of the temperatures and everything that the plants need but it's not for fish it's for just plants and i tried making an authentic uh, vivarium for like an aeroid collector and it's actually possible to get that done and make it look pretty natural um so i'm also going to do a video just on different vivariums like different sizes for different kinds of build luxury builds more simple ones that you can do with like debug plans as well as different tricks let me know what you think about that idea and if that's something you would want to see um, i am actually going to do it for myself for the save file so i have a little bit of different options for a different kind of i would say uh different um like purchasing levels because aeroid plants are very expensive so i'm imagining doing vivariums that are like for someone beginning to like collect plants as well as someone who's a very established collector or you know has a very disposable income um and also depending on the size of the house i've only done those for very big mansions and i'm curious to make one for um, smaller and like mid-size homes uh, and also for like small apartments because in reality mo a lot of people who collect like you know have big plant collections they they can have like a small apartment and literally the whole place is covered in plants so I'm curious to see how I can figure out to make that realistic and actually fit in a good way um, but I really love the one that I did for their like the East family mansion um, that build as well as their whole family is of course in my save file and I will do a video on the whole East family explaining their whole history and the lore and kind of presenting all of the family members. I also did a full section on my website that is only dedicated to the East family and their whole like uh, genealogy and their history um, because it's just like it's really fun to like make people like make sims that are like have a full fleshed out family and relationships and lore and i think it really adds at least for me it adds so much to the gameplay when you know the characters in the game really have a full history so i can if i place a new sim in that save i can see kind of from the personality traits if they're gonna like the matriarch of that family or the patriarch of that family or they if they're going to get along with some of the kids or not or like some of the aunts etc and it's also a way where i started also doing elderly sims in the save file because i think it's something we kind of forget about doing because usually you want to make sims pretty young when you start out because you don't want them to die <laughs> during your gameplay um, so I wanted to actually add more elderly in the save file after realizing that I really wanted to have the parents of the matriarch and the patriarch actually live in the world. Um, so that's something I'll be working on more. And that also got me into thinking about doing a house and apartments, etc. for someone who is uh, elderly. And that's also think, something I think we kind of forget as simmers to do simply because we don't play that much with elders. So I want to have a better mixture in kind of like um, the community when it comes to the actual sims. So that part you saw there next to the greenhouse on the left side of the greenhouse is where I put a lot of like um, type of plants, a lot of grasses and small flowers, small white flowers that are typical for uh, more sand heavy types of soils. And that part of the actual lot is aimed towards the beach. So this uh, lot in Brindleton Bay, ha it's a beachfront uh, lot. So to the left of the lot, there is like a pathway down to the beach and it actually comes up right to that section of the garden. So I'm imagining that the more luscious plants actually can survive in that part. So they planted more grasses and things that are more suitable for like the more sand heavy soils. I sincerely hope you enjoyed this video. My name is Khaleesi and I hope we can hang out in the next video. It makes such an incredible difference when you subscribe, like, and comment and watch my videos to the very end. It is incredibly motivating and it really keeps me going. And now you know what's coming. It's time for the very satisfying montage.
Welcome to the official end screen team. As a treat for staying to the very end, I wanted to let you know that in my Discord right now, you can see the previews of my Swedish modern townhouses that I built for, for rent. I already have the footage and I'm gonna upload it to YouTube in the coming week. What did you think about having this three-part big speed build kind of series? Is this something that you would want in the future? Let me know in the comments.